Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. It is the newspaper review segment. Let's start by taking a look at the front page of the Daily Trust, the newspaper this morning. Well, the major story is about six years after Abuja Kaduna Road project uncompleted. Riders are talking about the myriad of the potholes, cars and vehicles crashes, commuters demand urgent government action to be completed in 12 months. That's according to the works minister. I mean, details of that story. You can, of course, uh, find in uh, the pages of the Daily Trust, uh, on, of course, page four. Below the major story, we still have the, you know, um, back and forth um, on the Samoa report where Ombudsman writes to Daily Trust and asks uh, for response on this. Yeah, we've seen the federal government, of course, taking uh, the concern of the um, Daily Trust uh, reports uh, on the deal uh, to, uh, you know, federal government's uh, formal complaints on uh, the newspaper report of um, the Samoa. I mean, we'll dissect that later with our reviewer in the house. NNPCL now owns only 7.2% of Angote refinery. That's according to Alinko Angote. Victims narrate a deal of after school and residential building collapse in Jos and Abuja, a very disheartening, uh, you know, story and situation. Well, these are some of the stories that you'd find on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Let's move on and take a look at the Guardian newspaper, where the major story is about Supreme Court's judgment. 21 states raised to hold elections as 489 local government areas face zero fat allocations. You'll find that on page six. Beside there, we see, oh, there's a pictorial, of course, of the Supreme Court and um, the president and, you know, other stakeholders uh, on this. Tinubu can't be accessible to all. A presidency, I can tell tell Ndume, okay, and question to ask. I thought the president is for everyone and it's for no one. So we need to have access to, to the president. Um, Daily Trust Ombudsman commences investigation into government's allegations. Uh, that matter is uh, replicated on The Guardian. Langote Refinery resolves crude supply issues to roll out petrol in August. The Senate finalizes a bill that the states control of land with gold reserves to federal government. Lagos Assembly spent $36.7 million on non-existing visitors' toilets. Budget additional 50 million naira. I have a lot to say on that one. Protest, low turnout, trail Delta Council election. Um, EFCC silent as better edu allegedly stages comeback. No stopping Republican Party convention today, says Trump. Um, these are the stories that you'd find on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Let's talk about uh, the Nigerian Tribune. From the top of the page, AFDB a president additional faults the federal government approval of duty-free food imports, says policy is depressing, reopening borders will stabilize food prices, that's according to expert. Naira remains subdued despite CBN's injection of $122.67 million, or yeah, million dollars. Uh, we have a $35.18 billion in reserves accretion you find that on page 11. Below the head must there, Ayim Ogba dump PDP for APC in Eboi. Ogba Enigi dispute, Edo government deploys security men in court. Most states not viable. We don't need more Agba Koba. Okay. Uh, major stories about financial autonomy. Panic in states as 437 local governments risk zero allocation this month. Uh, fate of uh, caretaker committee, LCDAs hang in balance as nation awaits fight back by governors, Christian Marx over federalism and restructuring. The National Media Complaints Commission begins investigation into the federal government's uh, allegation against uh, the Daily Trust on Samoa Agreement. Tinubu world leaders react as Trump survives assassination attack at campaign rally. Three trapped, two rescued as building collapses in Oshun. Importers lose 284 billion naira to cargo sampling at Lagos Port in five years. Accused the NAVDAC son of um, frequent sampling collection 
why we won't return samples that's according to the reply of the sun and the NAVDAQ. these are the stories that you'd find on the nigerian tribune and now um let's quickly just join our reviewer suleiman ubagaya ceo and group editor of sky limits media group and former deputy president of nigerian guild of editors are joining us to review the front pages this morning good morning good morning it's good to have you <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, there's been a lot of things, but let's talk about this major uh, concerns where sometimes media have to dig on to push forward to say there's a lot of things that is not being done right and we have to ask the question. So talking about the six year after still Abuja Kaduna Road project uncompleted, I want us to expand our discussion not only to Abuja Kaduna Road, but other, you know, federal roads that okay. should have been done at least in, by 2024. Well, uh, let's remember that on December 20th, 20th uh, 2018, the government of President Bahari Sabr was what we can call uh, NWI gift. A very cherry news that the 375 kilometer canoe, I mean Abuja Kaduna canoe highway, uh, was going to be reconstructed. And um, it was a very cherry news because that is a major artery you know, that serves the southern Nigeria and the northern Nigeria, also between Abuja and especially the northwestern states. From northwest, of course, we can link to the northeast and, and, the, and, 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 and parts of north central. So it was a very major artery that serves the nation economically, socially, and, uh, and otherwise. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the government um, was very slow, even though the, the contract was added at 155 billion. You know, then three years later, it was uh, increased to 600 billion plus, almost 700 billion. And now, Julius Berger, the contractors are asking for 1.35 trillion naira because of the government's delay in meeting of its obligation, that is a timely payment. And you know, of course, there is a factor of inflation that I remember we discussed last week mm. uh, on this very program. So that has compelled the contractor to ask for 1.3. Uh, an open review to 1.35 trillion, and among the government is saying it cannot afford. But whatever it is, government should consider the fact that. Uh, uh, sorry, let me let me uh, let me at this stage commend Daily Trust uh, editorial team. I mean the Media Trust editorial uh, editorial team for this investigative story. Uh, you can see from the story that um, mm. the reporters undertook a trip from here to Abuja to Kaduna. And they counted 125 photos, mm. both big and small. And I remember about a month ago also, I dropped the Kaduna from Abuja for the first time in about a year. And it was very, very horrible, honestly. Uh, some of, you know, I, I don't think it, it will be charitable to simply call them photos. Some of them are ditches, I'm telling yeah. you. If, if you are driving in a small car, I'm telling you there is a possibility that you can simply get trapped. It's so really it's scary. a terrible thing. Uh, lives are being lost every day. Uh, commuters are suffering. And in fact, if not for the fact that the security services have upscaled uh, surveillance on that front, uh, kidnappers will have been having a field day. Mm. Because no matter how good your vehicle is, there are certain portions of the road where you have to drive in just about five, ten kilometers per hour. And at that speed, somebody <laughs> tracking on, on his foot can even catch up with you. Yeah. You know, so it's a very dangerous thing. And uh, I am pleased that the government, even before we had left fire a year ago, he was able to largely accomplish the Kaduna canoe sections of the, of the road. But the Abuja Kaduna aspect has it largely is, been left unattended. It's really, you know, disheartening. I mean, road should be major infrastructure that should at least be given to every person because we know how road can affect every Nigerian indeed, who gets indeed. to, you know, um, benefit from it. But alarming situation is that um, the road even leading to the nation's capital mm -hmm. have a lot of issues. Then imagine the ones that you know, um, are not uh, from uh, are leading to the nation's capture. It's really exactly. disheartening. Um, but I want to hear your take on, uh, you know, this um, local government autonomy by the Supreme Court. And now, you know, there's been some kind of panic saying 21 states are raised to hold elections to uh, 489 local governments saying that they are going to, they might face zero uh, federal allocations. What's your take on that? Well, I've been a very major proponent of local government autonomy for years. Uh, I maintain a column in the national newspaper, and the 
most of my writings have concentrated on local government autonomy. So for me, I can even see it as a personal victory, even mm. though I don't have anything personal yeah, to benefit from. Yeah. I see myself honestly as a, in fact, all of us are stakeholders mm. because uh, Nigerian economy, Nigerian security, all aspects of our life are going to be impacted positively by this development. But um, 21 states having caretaker committees, that is quite alarming. Mm. And you need to ask yourself, or we need to ask ourselves, are we really practicing democracy? Because, you see, the Constitution talks about three tiers of government, uh, federal government, state government, then local government. We, are, we have only concentrated governance at the two stratas, that is the federal and state, you know, abandoning the local government uh, tier. And that is the most significant because that's the one the masses, the downtrodden, have access to. And that's the one where somebody that is a son or daughter of nobody can aspire and become something. You can be a counselor easily, even without necessarily having a very big connection. You may also be a chairman, even though it's hardly the case anymore because the governors have, even when most of them keep appropriating the local government allocations, they still select who becomes chairman. Some of them even select who becomes councillor. And that is why you see in most states, um, whenever the local government elections hold, you realize that or it would be, it would be announced that the party in power has won everything 100%. Mm. So you see, uh, there is an aspect of whether uh, the local government autonomy can be successful because in as much as the governors are the ones determining who becomes chairman, I mean by their absolute control of the state electoral commissions, then I think will still be entangled at the same spot. You know, yeah. uh, it will achieve very little because still the governors will appoint their likees and they will direct them as to, you know, of course the money will go to them directly, but they will instruct them, for example, that, okay, you've received one billion, return 700 million to me, convert yeah. it to dollars and return it to me. So the NFIU, Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, the EFCC, the ICPC, all the anti-corrupt, agencies have a lot of work to do in, by way of tracking the local government funds to ensure that there is no diversion at the end yeah. of the day. Because honestly speaking, some of these governors, I'm sorry to you, see. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. I, I, I hear your concern. I mean, one of the concerns I know from some local government, people are still being paid salaries on the table. Exactly. And it begs you to differ, why should the money not even be sent via electronic means that mm -hmm. could easily be, you know, tracked and explained to the people and instead money is being moved uh, mm -hmm. with the Ghana Moscow and all of that. It's really, uh, we, we still have a long way to go. Let's, yeah, a very long way to go, honestly. <laughs> let's say that. Um, during, over the weekend, of course, like I said, there's been a sad situation of, uh, you know, what happened in um, a plateau state just and Saturday, it happened on Friday, while well, Saturday, um, a building collapse in Abuja. Uh, what is your take on all of this? Because even though uh, the state government are saying that um, the building has been in existence for a long time and, you know, should have um, done some things to avoid that, but then the, the schools are saying there's a mining, an illegal mining site close to the school mm -hmm. that um, they have given warning, they have called on the, the state government saying something is wrong, it's shaking our school, but nothing... Um, you know, what's done about it. What is your take on, you know, our system when it comes to non challenge attitude? Honestly, there are non challenge And uh, it's heartbreaking that seeing small children getting trapped in a college building with many of them killed. Mm. The best way to have a feeling of what happened is to imagine that happening to someone that you know or someone that is close to you. I think that approximates to having the correct feeling of how devastating this could be. And uh, there is, you know, every ministry who works in all our states will have a department that is responsible for testing the integrity of buildings, any structure, you know. I don't know what, why, why in Nigeria small things are always made difficult. I don't understand why such a very simple thing cannot be done. And look at this case, for example. They have reported about a mining side shaking their building. And yet nobody did anything because obviously uh, yeah, when you talk about money, uh, mining side, you are talking about big money, you know. Mm. So perhaps, I'm not alleging, you know, but perhaps maybe 
uh, you know, we, there we is some ask, underhand dealing. You we know, we need to ask more questions on mm -hmm. illegal mining because there is no way we are supposed to believe that um, illegal miners, especially some places, you would see, you know, expatriate people that are not Nigerians mm -hmm. in that site, and you're and we're meant to believe that you know Nigerian and government are not aware of situations like that going on. You see, to be very frank with you, uh, Nigeria is about the only country where you find that kind of tendency. If you go to some president, not just blood. If you go to some president, I'm telling you, ask the governor, ask even the security services. They know they are a privileged Nigerians. We all know them. I'm not supposed to mention their names in this studio, but we all know them. Very privileged Nigerians who have held big positions, you know, in the past, and who are still very influential, who have mining sites in very dangerous areas of Zampara. And we hear allegations of aircrafts, even though Zampara does not officially have an air, a, airport. Mm. But we have been told that there are airstrips somewhere in the forest of Zampara state, where some aircrafts will fly into Nigeria from some other countries, you know, fly into Nigeria, cut away our very precious gold, and take it back. So you wonder what is happening. Nigeria is a... Look at, imagine the implication of this thing to our national security, to our well-being. And that is, in fact, the main reason why insecurity has continued to deepen. And it will continue to deepen because it is in the interest of these illegal miners to continue to have insecurity. By the time you have security, people, uh, you people know, people will flock in these areas and they will get to know what is happening. Hmm. So that is why, unless government decides to take the bull by the horn, the Tinubu administration particularly, he has issues about his own legacy. I will urge President Tinubu to please and please, uh, I tell God beg you, let me use mm. pigeon, I tell God beg you, Mr. President, to please do something about this. There are privileged Nigerians who have held very big positions that are engaged in illegal money in Zampara and other states of Nigeria, and they are even alleged to be operating aircrafts in our it, forest. It's really disheartening. We very, very using, terrible. We keep using the word cabals, cabals, but we know who these people are. We and know who really these people are, exactly. We're not really pushing. Mm -hmm. It's like we're allowing these people feed off Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, feeding off our blood and, and sweat and all of that. Exactly. Let's, let's move on to hear your take because we had conversation about this uh, report and it's coming back. Uh, there's still a long process to it, the Samoa report. Now, ombudsman have been drawn into it um, where we saw the Minister of Information uh, make a report uh, of, uh, against Daily Trust. And Daily Trust wrote, uh, they're asking for um, a response. And Daily Trust are saying, okay, yes, we're going to reply you um, within the stipulated two weeks' time. What is your take on the process of or the progress of updates of this situation so far? Well, like I always say, I dislike situations where arguments are dragged uh, unnecessarily. For me, the government has um, made its point. I mean, the federal government by pointing out what it considers as errors mm. in the report by uh, Daily Trust. It should have stopped at that. But then, uh, taking the matter to the ombudsman is still a good thing. I mean, uh, it's better than the threats, yeah. you know, about uh, uh, taking Daily Trust to court, uh, doing this, doing that, you know. Uh, it, it, it's a civil approach, but then it doesn't. It is not going to serve the government very well. Yeah, honestly, Nigerians are saying, why is the government um, paying attention to this when there are lots of problems? You know, we should mm -hmm. move past uh, this situation. And, and besides, the government, this Tinubu administration need to be very tolerant. They, I remember the minister saying. Uh, there are governments who have done this, who have done that, uh, because some people have s s said this or that. But remember that a national newspaper chose to describe President Buhari as General Buhari. And Buhari did nothing throughout his tenure, even though that very newspaper continued practically to disregard him. You know, he had a constitutional uh, uh, appellation as president, and uh, yet they choose to discount all that. And the, that particular newspaper did nothing about it. I mean, uh, sorry, the, 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 the government of Bari did nothing about it. So I don't see why uh, the Tinibu administration should, uh, should start showing signs of uh, intolerance, honestly. It should be terrible. It should be able to call daily trust or other media trust to the table and say, look, gentlemen, 
we have issues with this year report. With, which the know. newspaper has already retracted on mm -hmm. you know, what they said. Exactly. You know, like I said last week, it's a human institution. It's prone to make a mistake. We all make mistakes. And the Minister of Information himself owns a newspaper. And that is, it, 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 I'm sure that newspaper has made several errors. In, in its reportage in the past, and it is going to make more errors. I'm not wishing them bad, yeah, you know, but it's a human institution. Every establishment, including the New York, New York Times, that is seen as the most influential newspaper in the whole world, they all make errors. So we, see, we see Americans calling out the New, New York Times. Exactly, well, so exactly. So, so my hope is that uh, the government will stop all this because it's distracting the government itself from its new and job you know exactly and it doesn't also speak well of the government you know pursuing a very reputable institution like the media trust indeed mm. appreciate your word of reputable uh, because of uh, allegations is saying you know inciting the public which of course, Media Trust Group, um, owners of Daily Trust, Trust TV, um, Trust Radio, Armenia, and, uh, you know, et cetera, are not known for. Um, exactly. It's known for its fairness and all of that. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's like, <laughs> I, I wish we had more time because no, no I wanted problem. to get your take <laughs> on, you know, a lot of things like the down got tape, but I'm sure we can do that offline. I mm. appreciate you, Slim and Obagaya, for joining us to dissect this. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. And with that, of course, we've come to the end of Daybreak this Monday morning. I appreciate you all for staying through to two hours of this show. Please do stick around. At the top of the hour, Adini Adishaka would bring you 360 Sport. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Do have a lovely day.